Hi everybody, um, I just wanted to take a look at chess ratings today, and uh, it's actually pretty late at night right now, um, but uh, this I thought was super interesting, and I thought a lot of other people would be interested in it. Um, found this graph on the internet, it looks like it's uh, from uh, FIDE, um, and if you're not familiar with chess, um, basically there's a rating system, and uh, there's a couple different organizations. This is uh, kind of more of an international organization. Um, and um, basically, what you see here is this kind of pathway looking like that, essentially, right? And, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, essentially there's also two clouds, right? So you kind of have this, this cloud here and then another cloud here, right? So you can kind of see that this is kind of going this way. And this is kind of going here. And a lot of people kind of come and leave from chess, including myself, um, in their 20s. Um, becomes super fun. Um, and then all of a sudden in your 30s, something happens. So, um, And you can kind of see that the rating is actually skewed towards those that stay in chess um, around 25 or so, right? So this top peak right in here is kind of the key. Um, and uh, we'll just take this back. So uh, in general, this part here is where the highest rated players are. Um, so, and this is kind of flat, you can see. So it kind of cross sections like that. And that would be around 30 years old. Um, so I've heard other people say, um, you know, like when is your peak? So um, that was a pretty interesting concept for me, um, just because I started to think, okay, so here I am uh, getting older, and uh, what does that mean for intelligence? So first of all, on the young person side, uh, here is some of the uh, great recent chess players, um, and you can see uh, there's, again, this kind of, there's this point right in about here where things change. So, um, you know, and, and if you know anything about chess, uh, being at, you know, in this range, you know, if you're 13 years old and you're playing at like this level, you're doing pretty well. So it's not just pretty well. So um, there's, you know, if the average person playing chess um, is, uh, you know, in here, like, so this doesn't show the average, so I'll have to show that, but, um, I thought this is just a pretty cool graph. So I'm gonna pause this for a second. Uh, so sorry about that. I just wanted to show you this graph. So, you know, obviously when you're thinking about young kids playing chess and older adults, um, you kind of want to look at this distribution before you get to that point, right? So we kind of need to see that, you know, in terms of chess playing ability, you know, most people that, so there's basically these two groups, right? So at this point, right about here, um, which is right about here, is kind of the dividing half, right? So there's basically the people that play chess more seriously and the people that are just really casual players. And then there's kind of like this average point. So basically the average chess player, you could say is probably right about in here if they play somewhat seriously, but not so seriously. And then there's kind of like the peak the average person that is playing. So when you look at this distribution, it doesn't quite give you that because this is showing the rating and the number of people, right? So you can kind of see it, it the FIDE is because it's international, it's a little bit harder to get into. And this is also kind of an older number, um, but it still is helpful to look at that chart. So this kind of shows you two groups, but it doesn't nearly show you the same data. So for example, this shows 1200s. And I think this number has something to do with number of games played. So they're kind of like ruling out quite a number of players here. Um, and that makes it difficult. But this graph I love uh, just because it's kind of gives you a lot of data. And I think this is the summation, I believe it says uh, EL, ELO USCF rating. So this is something that was published on Stack Exchange. Um, that I was thought was pretty interesting. Um, I'll just erase this in case you want to take a look at it. Uh, so the original data that this came from was this posting that I noticed, and 
basically um, this is the data so it looks like they were kind of taking this from uh, 2013 and there's some kind of database here showing the number of established players and so on so you can see this exact number for the uh, mean and median rating um, so basically around 1300 was that kind of midpoint in here which we circled um, and if you separate it from the under 16 crowd um, you can kind of see that uh, this is kind of what that first hump is so that's why but this shows you kind of a different graph so this shows you maybe the average being a little bit higher maybe around 17 1800 um, but actually skewed back this way around 16 or 1500 so uh, and then just some other graphs that people have made here so I thought this was all just helpful just to uh, kind of get us started in what's going on here uh, so this may or may not be interesting to you but this posting on chess.com uh, shows a link here to the actual feed aid data so this has November and I believe you can just download the data um, this is probably just a full list of everybody so you'd have to kind of like graph that uh, once you download it but unfortunately feed aid doesn't even show the graph here they just give you the actual data so um, you can download ah, top charts maybe top countries top players I don't know let's just see maybe they have a top chart here that would help us understand this but uh, in general um, looks like they don't really have it so um, just taking a while to download um, but uh, yeah so this just shows uh, the data finally downloaded here sorry about that but this just shows essentially the top players you can see their current rating um, and things like that so it'd be nice just if they had uh, you know kind of a chart or something for some reason it just doesn't have that so um, but uh, nevertheless um, we have some other data here so uh, if you're if you study this ELL rating it's fairly simple it takes you know a little while to understand but essentially on this graph is the difference between two players so if your rating is about 1300 and someone else is say 400 points above you um, the probability that they'll win is like essentially 91 percent so if someone is 200 points above you it's still pretty bad looking for you about say 75 percent right and that means about 25 percent on the opposite side of this curve um, now these K numbers I'm not totally sure what that means um, if you win the game or lose the game it kind of depends it will affect your rating so uh, there's a calculation you can look up I can show you that in a second um, but essentially this is a great little way just to uh, start to understand this I have a couple more charts here so when you compare this to in general your intelligence so IQ of like a hundred um, you know your IQ uh, does change as you get older right so again this kind of matches up with a chess rating system so if you looked at this one this shows just about 25 being the peak and that seems to agree with this just random data that I picked up somewhere on the internet um, and uh, I can give you the well there's a source here I you just have to search for it um, and uh, in general so the general idea is that you know IQ is about at a hundred here and you know approximately one standard deviation gives you about 68.2 percent and then there's these two halves on either side and you can see that this if you divide this exactly here it looks like this intelligence side it's kind of gradual or here and then really fast suddenly there and then fast right so it should be exactly equal on each side so uh, depending on how you look at that so here this doesn't quite agree with that um, so if this hump here this would say this is you know this is not a, a normal distribution so you'd have to say you know and that may be because some really young one, ones are in here so it could be that there's an actual line coming in like this somewhere um, so we don't really know but uh, in general 
uh, we would look for a distribution like this. So that was one thing that actually got me started more interested in what was going on, um, particularly for chess. So this uh, drop off is something to think about. Um, you know, like like if you only have a hundred points here, so between this one and this one is a huge difference, right? There's not many people at 1900 and a lot more at 1800. And if you're familiar with chess, you realize that this is the case. Um, and a hundred points difference means about 65% of the time you're gonna win if you're a hundred points better. So uh, if you're 200 points better, you start to be up in this range, which is 80%. And that's quite a lot um, so you have to think about that in terms of calculations. Um, you know, essentially, are these people able to calculate a heck of a lot more or not? So, um, and and actually, at this rating level, you're kind of just becoming unbelievably good at chess. So, um, you know, it's uh, you know, essentially, these guys over here are the very very best chess players in the world. Um, so. Um, and there's even guys, chess computers, interestingly, which I'm going to have kind of a separate discussion on, um, are kind of even further. They're in the, believe it or not, 3,500 range now. So um, I was kind of wanting to look at this first, kind of the human side, um, and then look at the chess computer side uh, later on. Oops. Uh, so just kind of a couple last graphs here. So here you can see, um, you know, it, it is hard to get a rating. So to get your rating, you kind of have to play real people, um, or you can kind of estimate that. So here is one relationship between, uh, say, like a real FIDE rating versus uh, just an artificial rating, and try, try to see if you can match that up. You kind of see there's kind of some staggering differences, uh, particularly around this 1900 range. Um, so that'd be interesting to kind of uh, think about and quantify. The other interesting thing is to think about uh, how does their chess rating relate to, for example, solving other kinds of puzzles. Someone posted this graph. I thought that was pretty interesting. So you can kind of see maybe more variation here and then at the higher end, uh, basically almost a direct correlation uh, between uh, chess rating and ability to solve uh, some kinds of weird puzzles. And that would be an interesting topic, right? So like, why is there so much uh, change here? And it looks like the, you know, it's almost like specialty, right? So you can kind of see that uh, it's a little bit biased towards this. So basically that means that there's specialties involved. Like either you're good with this way or you're good at going this way. But when you're good at both, uh, you know, actually most of the so you're good with both. So just uh, interesting to think about. Uh, if you're interested in where that data came from for this graph, this is a great graph showing age. So really for me, this was interesting to think about because I thought, man, dude, I feel so much smarter nowadays than I used to. This says that I'm not as good of a chess player as I used to be, and I know that that's the truth. Uh, however, I've focused on way more important things nowadays in my life than just chess. Um, for example, I could probably write a chess computer program that could uh, just uh, play unbelievable chess. So. Um, and whereas I might not have thought about that as much as a kid. So um, this is a great uh, source here for uh, this particular paper, just to make sure that everybody has it. Now, for sure, if you're interested in the ELL rating system, I've read this uh, when I was playing chess, wanted to understand it in great detail. Later down here on this ELL rating thing, they show this graph that we used right here. This graph is really helpful uh, because we want to know like, if someone is 200 points better than me, uh, what is the probability that they're going to beat me or something like that. So if they're 200 points, they're probably way better. And that uh, sometimes it's just interesting like when you're sitting down and playing a game of chess, so just try to comprehend like what is the person, like why have they actually beaten you? And what is the ability, what do they see that you didn't see or what um, did you miss? Was it a blunder? Uh, most of the times it's a blunder. Um, and just uh, thinking about, uh, you know, like how this rating system uh, works and, and, and what, what it means in terms of how to think differently if you're really trying to get uh, better at chess. And uh, some of the best chess players 
of all time. You can see a list of chess players by peak FIDE rating. And you can see uh, these are all the humans here, right? So you got uh, Magnus Carlsen, uh, Gary Kasparov, and uh, you can just kind of go through. I, I was really interested in seeing certain ones. Um, there is a video here that you might want to see. Um, that's for the chess computers. But this one basically shows you over the years, like how different people did. And you can see Bobby Fischer was like way better than the crowd here. So you may want to investigate some things like this just to kind of get some ideas. And this general intelligence graph came from this uh, website here. You can just uh, kind of take a look at it uh, for reference. Uh, so anyway, we're just going to kind of close out here. Um, so you might want to just at the bottom of some of these pages, like in this one, FIDE World Rankings, you can see open this and then click hide and then unhide. And it kind of gives you just a summary of all the things going on with chess. Um, and what I did is I just looked at a couple of those, like from this video, you can kind of just watch over, you know, a hundred, a couple hundred years now, right? Back to the early 1800s and even before um, chess. So different people like this guy, uh, Paul Morphy and uh, this guy here seemed particularly interesting. Uh, I mean, you Lasker, and it's just interesting to see some of their early childhood, what they were like. Uh, this guy was from Cuba, for instance. Um, and just some uh, famous players that uh, may have redefined chess for an entire country and even the world. Uh, so this guy came from Russia here. And then just kind of thinking about uh, modern day times. So this is the modern list and the ELL rating system. And then, of course, Bobby Fischer, American guy. Um, and just uh, kind of reading and thinking, and uh, very famous Gary Kasparov. And uh, just thinking about uh, all these rating systems is pretty interesting. Um, and then you might want to look at the World Chess Championship. Um, what I would do is just find particular games that have been notable. Um, and even comparing those uh, to what's going on with the computer, I hope to do a follow-up study um, kind of on the World Computer Chess Championships. Um, but uh, uh, certainly these guys are all interesting to look at. This is kind of the modern list. And what you'll notice is that, uh, you know, these 1800s is pretty much been the peak right now. So it's been 1800 plus, almost to 1900 for some of these, for parts of their career. Um, they might have almost gotten to that point. Um, but it's certainly very interesting uh, just to study uh, what's been going on in the chess world. I hope this has really helped you um, and uh, you learned something.